convening having arrived, all members of the House will please report to the floor and take seats. All members of the House will report to the floor and take your seats. The clerk will ring the bell. All members will please take seats. We are going to have the morning roll call. All members present will please vote green to signify their presence in the chamber and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines. Doorkeepers will please close the doors and keep them closed. Well, good morning. Happy Friday. Also, the halfway point of the 2019 session, by the way. 20 days down. Yeah. We will begin our day with scripture reading and prayer by the chaplain, after which we will pledge allegiance to the flag of our country. Our chaplain this morning will be introduced by the gentleman from the 72nd House District, Representative Josh Bonner. Representative Bonner. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, good morning. Uh, t it's my pleasure to introduce you to my friend and pastor, Al Mead. Uh, pastor Mead is the associate pastor of community at my home church, New Hope Baptist in Fayetteville, and he's been with us for a little over 20 years now, he and his wife, Shelly. And... Um, Pastor Mead is a Morehouse graduate, uh, and he is also an accomplished athlete. He won a gold medal in the 88 Paralympic Games and a silver medal in the long jump in the 1992 Paralympic Games. And he is also uh, a member of the Georgia Sports Hall of Fame and the Atlanta Sports Hall of Fame, uh, an honor he shares with uh, Representative Dewey McLean, uh, who said he was on the selection committee for that, so we appreciate it. Um, but above all, uh, Pastor Mead is a, a loving husband, uh, a father, grandfather, and a good friend. Pastor Mead. Thank you, Josh. I'm going to start out with our scripture reference from 1 Corinthians 9, verse 22 to 23. It says, To the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel that I may share with them in its blessing. I'm a multicultural community leader and, and I love when we all come together. You know, I'm also an amputee being a Paralympic gold medalist. God blessed me to be a barrier breaker in the area of sports as an amputee. I became an amputee from a sports accident on the very day of the funeral services of Dr. Martin Luther King in 1968. You see, back then, they didn't make prosthetic legs. I'm a left above knee amputee. They didn't make them for sports and the level of activity. 
but God used me to break barriers for people with disabilities. It was unheard of of amputees competing in organized sports. But we know that the course of history has been changed by men and women who were unifiers willing to dare. For barrier breakers, life is a breathtaking adventure, but it's also a struggle. Every winner has scars. Every winner has, has been in a struggle. But being a barrier breaker for God requires strong faith in God, ambition, and a strong will to succeed. You know, my favorite passage is where Apostle Paul says in Philippians 3, 12, 14, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. You see, Jesus had taken hold of Paul and changed his life, and now Paul says, I'm going to take hold of him. You know, Paul says, I used to be the one who was not a unifier. I put up the barriers, but he's now saying, I'm going to meet you where you are. If we want to give hope to others, if we want to engage other cultures, let's use the examples of Jesus Christ. A lot of us Christians today don't know who they are in Christ. We try to become who we think God wants us to be based on the behaviors and what culture says we should be, and we become frustrated and stressed out and burned out. We naturally gravitate to standards and behaviors just to be accepted. Now, when I look at my physical identity, I was born a mead. I couldn't help it, didn't request it, didn't petition for it or bid on it. I became a mead by birth. I could try and act like I'm somebody else. I'm still a mead. I may want to be like the Joneses, look like the Joneses, dress like the Joneses, live like the Joneses. No matter how hard I try, I'm still a mead. But the miracle of the Christian is that we have been born again, we are a new creation, we have a new identity, we have been transformed. So what I'm saying is no matter your surroundings, no matter where you were born, no matter where God has placed you, when you are in Christ, you are worthy, you are strong, you don't have a spirit of fear, you have victory in Christ, you're never alone, you have direct access to God, and we are family. We're a child of the Most High through faith in Jesus Christ. Now, if you want to be God's barrier breaker and help others to experience hope, like the Apostle Paul, we must engage. Paul says in Galatians 3.28, there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Paul is saying the new vertical relationship in God results in a new horizontal relationship with each other. That in Christ, there is no racial, no social, no gender superiority. All labels are secondary among those who share Jesus in common. This is a radical thinking of the Roman day culture back then. But this also made Christianity unique and attractive because it valued each individual and provided a unified body. No matter what the color of the skin, it's the color of the heart. You know, the devil does a great job in splitting up the people of God, keeping us from being one people of God. And God is not going to bring a revival just to part of his church. He won't bring a white revival or a black revival or an Asian revival or a Hispanic revival. He's going to bring his revival. And that's why we must make a point to seek out and appreciate people who aren't like you. All that matters is love and the brotherhood and the sisterhood in Christ. So let's realize who we are in Christ and become God's barrier breaker. Realize who you are in Christ and meet people where you are. Remember, you weren't always a believer in Christ. The next time you're told that God can't use you, remember also in the Bible that Abraham, they said he was too old, that Joseph was abused, that Moses couldn't talk, that Rahab was a prostitute, David had an affair, Jonah ran from God, Peter denied Christ, Martha worried about everything, but God used each of them to be barrier breakers, and he can also use you as well. So God wants to use you. So during this time, let him do that. To be unifiers, barrier breakers, crossing the aisle. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to hear from your word. And, and Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to serve you and to serve each other. I pray for this day, that this is a day, Lord, that uh, we meet each other where we are, 
We cross the aisles. Give us wisdom. Give us boldness. Give us love. Give us purpose, Lord. Give us the same mind and the same heart. It's in Jesus' name we pray and thank you. Amen. Amen. Join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Doorkeepers will unlock the doors. Chair recognizes Chairman Taylor, the Chair of the Committee on Information and Audits. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Information and Audits have read the proceedings of the previous legislative day and found them to be correct. Chairman Taylor, the Chair of the Committee on Information and Audits, reports that the journal of the previous legislative day has been read and found to be correct. Is there any objection to the confirmation of the journal? The chair hears none and the journal is confirmed. The clerk will read the resolution establishing the order of business for the day. Mr. Burns, 159th moves following me establishes the order of business during the first part of the period unanimous consents. Introduction of bills and resolutions. First reading and reference of House bills and resolutions. Second reading of bills and resolutions. Reports of standing committees. Third reading and passage of uncontested local bills and resolutions. First reading and reference of Senate bills and resolutions. Morning orders. Is there any objection to the adoption of the resolution establishing the order of business for the day? The chair hears none and the resolution is adopted. First reading of bills and resolutions. The clerk will read. House Bill 6 by Representative Trammell, 132nd Bruce, the 61st, Alexander, the 66th, Beverly, the 143rd, Bodie, the 62nd, and others. Bill being titled an act to amend Chapter 2 of Title 21 of the Fish Bill of George Annotator relating to primaries and elections generally. Governmental Affairs. House Bill 407 by Representative Drenner, the 85th Powell, the 32nd, Buckner, the 37th Powell, Fry, the 118th, and Henson, the 86th. The bill being titled an act to amend Article 6 of Chapter 3 and Article 3 of Chapter 5 of Title 44 of the Fish Code of George Annotated relating to property owners association. Judiciary. House Bill 408 by Representative Drenner, the 85th, and Fry, the 118th. Bill being titled an act to amend code section 4286.1 of the official code of George Annotator relating to special license plates. Motor vehicles. House Bill 409 by Russell Apollo, the 32nd, Stevens, the 164th, Benton, the 31st, McCall, the 33rd, Clark, the 98th, and others. Bill being titled an act to amend code section 433425 of the official code of George Annotator relating the delegation of certain medical acts. Special Committee on Access to Quality Health Care. House Bill 410 by Representative Montmahon of the 17th, Kelly of the 16th, Gravely the 67th, McCall of the 33rd, Hatchet of the 150th, and others. Bill being titled an act to amend code sections 40, 8, 29 of the official code of George Annotated relating to fo spotlights, fog lights. Motor vehicles. House Bill 411 by Representative Harrell of the 106th, Paul of the 171st, and England the 116th. Bill being titled an act to amend Article 1 of Chapter 5 of Title 48 of the Fiscal Code of George Annotated relating the general provisions regarding ad valorem taxation. Ways and means. House Bill 412 by Representative Lumsden of the 12th, Stevens of the 164th, Gravely the 67th, Powell the 171st, and Hitchens the 161st. Bill being titled an act to amend Chapter 5C of Title 48 of the Fiscal Code of George Annotated relating to alternative ad valorem taxes. Ways and means. House House Bill 413 by Representative Hogan of the 179th column of the 68th Powell of the 171st. Williams of the 148th, Corbett of the 174th, and others. Bill being titled an act to amend code section 4841 of the Fish Code of George Annotated relating to procedures for sales under tax levies. Ways and means. House Bill 414 by Representative Kennard of the 102nd. Lopez Romero of the 99th. 
Carter the 92nd, McLeod of the 105th, and Carter and Clark of the 108th. They'll be entitled in Act 2 of Men, Chapter 2 of Title 20, the Bishop of George and Teddy, relating to elementary and secondary education. Education. House Bill 415 by Representative Kennard of the 102nd, Mitchell of the 88th, Evans of the 83rd, McLeod of the 105th, McLaurin of the 51st, and others. The bill being titled Act to Amend Article 5 of Chapter 5 of Title 40. The official code of Georgia annotated relating identification cards for persons without driver's licenses. Public safety and homeland security. House Bill 416 by Representative Williams, the 145th, Gamble of the 15th, Mathiac the 73rd, Buckner the 137th, and Hogan the 179th. Bill being titled Act to Amend Title 31 of the official code of Georgia annotated relating to health. Health and Human Services. House Bill 417 by Representative Apollo the 32nd. Hitchens the 161st, Clark of the 147th, and Williams the 145th. Bill being titled Act to Amend Title 35, the official code of George Ann Tatey relating to law enforcement officers and agencies. Public Safety and Homeland Security. House Bill 418 by Representative Anulowitz of the 42nd, Kendrick of the 93rd, Oliver of the 82nd, Wilson of the 80th, and Carter of the 92nd, and others. Bill being titled Act to to provide greater protections for individuals who have suffered from childhood sex abuse. Judiciary. House Bill 420 by Representative Stevens of the 164th. The bill being titled an act to amend Chapter 13 of Title 48 of the Fisher Code of Georgia Annotated relating to specific business and occupation taxes. Ways and means. House Bill 421 by Representative Stevens of the 164th. bill being titled an act to amend Code Section 20. Two one sixty eight of the official code of Georgia annotated relating to the minimum school year and other matters. Education. House Bill four twenty two by Resident Barr of the hundred and third, Welch of the hundred and tenth, Pruitt of the hundred and forty ninth, Weed Hour of the hundred and nineteenth, and Tanner of the ninth and others. The bill being titled an act to amend chapter seven of title twelve of the official code of Georgia annotated relating to control of soil erosion and sedimentation. Natural resources and environment. House Bill 423 by Resident Bazemore of the 63rd, Bruce of the 61st, Jackson of the 64th, and Bodie of the 62nd. Bill being titled an act to provide for a new homestead exemption from the city of South Fulton ad valorem taxes. Intergovernmental coordination. House Bill 424 by Representative Silcox of the 52nd, Cooper of the 43rd, Kelly of the 16th, and Gravely of the 67th. Bill being titled an act to amend code section 1615.3 of the official code of Georgia annotated relating the definitions regarding street gang terrorism. Judiciary non-civil. House Bill 425 by Representative Carson of the 46th. Bill being titled Act of Men Code Section 48740.12 of the official code of Georgia annotated relating to an income tax credit for qualified research expenses. Ways and means. House Bill 426 by Representative Abstration of the 104th. Smyrie 135th. Bennett of the 94th. Silcox of the 52nd. Drenner of the 85th and others. Bill be titled an act to amend Article 1 of Chapter 10 of Title 17 of the Fish Code of Georgia annotated relating the procedure for sentencing and imposition of punishment. Judiciary non civil. House Bill 427 by Representative Cannon of the 58th, Beasley Teague of the 65th, Gardner of the 57th, Bernal of the 77th, Holcomb of the 81st, and others. Bill be titled an act to amend Part 1 of Article 2 of Chapter 5 of Title 48 of the Fish Code of Georgia annotated relating to property tax exemptions. Ways and Means. House Bill 428 by Representative Workheiser of the 157th, Powell of the 171st, England of the 116th, Watson of the 172nd, Jackson of the 128th, and others. Bill being titled Act to Amend Titles 36 and 48 of the Fiscal Code of Georgia Annotated relating to local government and revenue and taxation. Ways and Means. House Bill 429 by Rep Representative Martin of the 49th. Bill being titled an Act to Amend Code Section 42. 151 of the Fiscal Code of Georgia Annotated relating to annual license fees. Transportation. House Bill 430 by Representative Martin of the 49th, Jones of the 47th, Robichaux of the 48th. A bill being titled Act to Amend an Act to Increase the Homestead Exemption from Certain City of Alpharetta Ad Valorem Taxes. Intergovernmental Coordination. House Bill 431 by Representative Martin of the 49th, Jones of the 47th, and Robichaux of the 48th. Bill being titled Act to Amend an Act to Provide for an Additional $10,000 Homestead Exemption from Certain City of Alpharetta ad valorem taxes. Intergovernmental coordination. House Bill 432 by Representative Cartner, Car Carson of the 46th, Blackman of the 146th, Knight of the 130th, Harrell of the 106th, and Williamson of the 115th. Bill being titled an act to amend Title 48 of the Fish Code of Georgia annotated relating to revenue and taxation. Ways and means. House Bill 433 by Representative Holcomb of the 81st. Bill being titled an act to amend Chapter 2 of Title 21 of the Fish Code of Georgia annotated relating to primaries and elections generally. 
Governmental Affairs. House Resolution 305 by Representative Ridley, the 6th Corporate of the 174th Powell, the 171st Hatch of the 150th, and Montahana the 17th, a resolution creating the House Study Committee on Special License Plates. Special Rules. House Resolution 306 by Representative Abstration, the 104th Cooper, the 43rd, Stevens, the 164th, Martin, the 49th, Weedauer, the 119th, and others, a resolution to provide for a reduction in the highest personal and corporate income taxes. Ways and means. Senate Bill 1 by Senator Parent of the 42nd, Jordan of the 6th, Jones of the 22nd, Kirk of the 13th, Black of the 8th, and others. Bill be entitled an act to amend Title 40, the fiscal code of George Ann Taylor relating to motor vehicles and traffic. Judiciary non civil. Senate Bill 72 by Senator Harper of the 7th, Mullis of the 53rd, Gooch of the 51st, Jones of the 25th, Ginn of the 47th, and others. The bill to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 1 of Title 27 of the Fish Code of Georgia Annotated relating to general provisions relative to game and fish. Game, fish, and parks. That completes first readers. Second reading of bills and resolutions. The clerk will read. House Bill 380 by Representative Tanner of the 9th, a bill to amend an act granting a new charter for the city of Dawsonville. House Bill 381 by Representative Efstration of the 104th. Bar of the 103rd and Oliver of the 82nd, a bill relating to child support guidelines for determining the amount of award, continuation, duty of support, duration of support. House Bill 382 by Representative Burns of the 159th, Watson of the 172nd, Smith of the 70th, Gaines of the 117th, Rhodes of the 120th, and others, a bill relating to outdoor stewardship. House Bill 383 by Representative Bonner of the 72nd, Martin of the 49th, Jones of the 25th, Matthew of the 73rd, and Montahan of the 17th, a bill relating to annual license fees for operation of vehicles. House Bill 384 by Representative Wilensky of the 79th, Fry of the 118th, Shannon of the 84th, Holland of the 54th, McLaren of the 51st, and others, a bill relating to having or carrying handguns, long guns, or other weapon license requirements, exemptions for homes, motor vehicles, private property, other locations and conditions. House Bill 385 by Representative Hawkins of the 27th, Smith of the 134th, Powell of the 171st, Kelly of the 16th, Hatchet of the 150th, and others, a bill relating to insurance. House Bill 386 by Representative Kendrick of the 93rd, Carter of the 92nd, Robichaud of the 48th, Marin of the 96th, Beverly of the 143rd, and others. A bill relating to income taxes, House Bill 387, by Representative Lumsden of the 12th, Gravely of the 67th, Stevens of the 164th, Hitchens of the 161st, and Petrie of the 166th. A bill relating to certain liens established and removal of non conforming liens. House Bill 388, by Representative Silcox of the 52nd, Stevens of the 164th, Gardner of the 57th, Nix of the 69th. A bill relating to development impact fees. House Bill 389, by Wilinski. Representative Walensky of the 79th, Roos of the 61st, Basemore of the 63rd, Shannon of the 84th, Smith of the 41st, and others, a bill relating to compulsory attendance. House Bill 390 by Representative Benton of the 31st, a bill relating to service creditable toward retirement benefits for the Teachers Retirement System of Georgia. House Bill 391 by Representative Benton of the 31st, a bill relating to general provisions for retirement and pensions. House Bill 392 by Representative Widower of the 119th, Kelly of the 16th, Gaines of the 117th, Hitchens of the 161st, Clark of the 147th, and others, bills relating to expense allowance and travel cost reimbursement for members of certain boards and commissions, House Bill 393, by Representative McLeod of the 105th, Efstration of the 104th, McLean of the 100th, Stovall of the 74th, Kennard of the, of the 102nd, and others, a bill relating to imposition rate computation exemptions from state income tax. House Bill 394, by Representative Earhart of the 36th, Hitchens of the 161st, Lumsden of the 12th, Carson of the 46th, Taylor of the 173rd, and others, bill relating to traffic safety, general provisions for law enforcement officers and agencies, general provisions regarding uniform rules of the road. House Bill 395 by Representative Scott of the 76th, Jackson of the 64th, Beasley Teague of the 65th, Mitchell of the 88th, a bill relating to acquisition, collection, classification, preservation of information, assisting in identifying deceased persons or locating missing persons. House Bill 396 by Representative Washburn of the 141st, Fleming of the 121st, a bill relating to fraud and related practices. House Bill 397 by Representative Knight of the 130th, Harold of the 106th, Bill relating to imposition rate computation of and exemptions from income taxes. <coughs> House Bill 398 by Representative Smith of the 41st, Bar of the 103rd, Collins of the 68th, Wilkerson of the 38th, Allen of the 40th, and others. Bill relating to uniform rules of the road. House Bill 399 by Representative Jones of the 167th, Kelly of the 16th, Clark of the 98th, Dempsey of the 13th, Chokas of the 138th, and others. A bill relating to registration and licensing of motor vehicles. House Bill 400 by Representative Jones of the 167th, Powell of the 32nd, Ridley of the 6th, Jasper's the 11th, Hitchens of the 161st, and others, a bill relating to presentation of identification to poll workers, House Bill 401, by Representative Gaines of the 117th, Clark of the 98th, Belton of the 112th, Redauer of the 119th, Gamble of the 15th, and others, a bill relating to prestige license plates and special plates for certain persons and vehicles. 
House Bill 402, by Representative Gaines of the 117th, Cooper of the 43rd, Petrie of the 166th, Widower of the 119th, Dempsey of the 13th, and others. Bill relating to protection of disabled adults and elder persons. House Bill 403, by Representative Holcomb of the 81st, Gilliard of the 162nd, Kenner of the 102nd, Paris of the 142nd, Hughley of the 136th, and others. Bill relating to penal institutions. House Bill 404, by Representative Carson of the 46th, Earhart of the 36th, Cooper of the 43rd, Allen of the 40th, Newlewitz of the 42nd, and others. Bill to amend an act changing the compensation of the clerk. It's Superior Court, Sheriff, and Judge of Probate Court of Cobb County. House Bill 405 by Representative Knight of the 130th, Carpenter of the 4th, Stevens of the 164th, Kelly of the 16th, Fees of the Teague of the 65th, a bill relating to property tax exemptions. House Bill 406 by Representative Williamson of the 115th, Powell of the 171st, a bill relating to local government revenue and taxation. House Bill 419 by Representative Knight of the 130th, Harold of the 106th, Powell of the 171st, Carson of the 46th, Martin of the 49th, and others, bill relating to revenue and taxation. House Resolution 291 by Representative Park of the 101st, Hughley of the 136th, Hutchinson of the 107th, Moore of the 95th, Clark of the 108th, and others. Resolution creating the House Study Committee on Increasing Access to After School Programs. Senate Bill 17 by Senator Gooch of the 51st, Wilkinson of the 50th, Harper of the 7th, Hill of the 4th, Kirk of the 13th, and others. Bill relating to public utilities, public transportation. Senate Bill 48 by Senator Martin of the 9th, Kirkpatrick of the 32nd, Brass of the 28th, Unterman of the 45th, Sims of the 12th, and others. Bill relating to education. Senate Bill 55 by Senator House Settler of the 52nd, a bill relating to employer, employee and employer contributions and con creation of funds for contributions, benefits, and administrative expenses. Senate Bill 75 by Senator Black of the 8th, Wilkinson of the 50th, Harper of the 7th, Anderson of the 24th, Burke of the 11th, and others. Bill relating to State Board of Veterinary Medicine. Senate Bill 79 by Senator Gooch of the 51st, Beach of the 21st, Harper of the 7th, Butler of the 55th, Jen of the 47th, a bill relating to restrictions on outdoor advertising. Senate Bill 93 by Senator Thompson of the 14th, Huff Settler of the 52nd, Payne of the 54th, a bill to amend an act providing a supplement to the salary of, of the judge of the Superior Court of the Judicial Cherokee Judicial Circuit. Senate Bill 111 by Senator Kirk of the 13th, a bill to provide for to the Probate Court of Dooley County shall also serve as the Chief Magistrate of the Magistrate Court of Dooley County through second readers. Reports of standing committees, the clerk will read. Representative Reinders of the 152nd District, Chairman of the Committee on Governmental Affairs, submitted the following report. The Speaking Committee on Governmental Affairs has set under consideration the following bills of the House. And has instructed me to report the same back to the House with the following recommendations. House Bill 284 do pass. House Bill 285 do pass. House Bill 322 do pass. House Bill 316 do pass by committee substitute. Respectfully submitted, Representative Reinders, the 152nd District. Chairman. Representative Jan Tankersley, the 160th District Chairman of the Committee on Intergovernmental Coordination Local, submitted the following report. The Speaker, Committee on Intergovernmental Coordination Locals had under consideration following the bills of the House and instructed me to report the same back to the House with the following recommendations. House Bill 72 do pass by substitute. House Bill 121 do pass. House Bill 161 do pass by substitute. House Bill 240 do pass. House Bill 291 do pass. House Bill 293 do pass. House Bill 297 do pass. House, House Bill 304 do pass. House Bill 305 do pass. House Bill 306 do pass. House Bill 358 do pass. House Bill 272 do pass. House Bill 274 do pass. Respectfully submitted, Rep Representative Jan Stankersley, the 160th District Chairman. Representative Administration of the 104th District Chairman on the Committee on Judiciary Non Civil submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Judiciary Non Civil has had in consideration the following bills of the House. This instructed me to report the same back to the House. House Bill 259 do pass by substitute. House Bill 281 do pass by substitute. House Bill 341 do pass. Respectfully submitted, Representative Efstration of the 104th District. Chairman. That completes the reports to the standing committees.
We are going on to the local calendar. We are going on to the local calendar. For what purpose does Chairman Benton rise? Make a motion. State your motion. Make a motion that House Bill 161 be postponed to the ne till the next legislative day. Clerk will read the caption. House Bill 161 by substitute by Representative Benton of the 31st, Jackson County. This bill provides for the composition of the Board of Elections and Registration in Jackson County. On the motion of the chairman that House Bill 161 be postponed or be removed from the local calendar for today and postponed until the next legislative day, is there objection? Chair hears none, and it is so ordered. There are two bills in the local calendar relating to homestead exemption. These require a recorded two-thirds roll call vote for passage. If there is no objection, we will vote on the local calendar minus House Bill 161 as a whole with a recorded vote. Hearing none, it is so ordered. The clerk will read the local calendar. House Bill 72 by substitute by Representative Bernal, the 77th, Clayton County. House Bill 121 by Representative Bruce of the 61st, the city of South Fulton. House Bill 240 by Representative Hatchett of the 150th, town of, town of East Dublin. House Bill 291 by Representative Bonner, the 72nd, city of Peachtree City. House Bill 293 by Representative Bonner, the 72nd, city of Fayetteville. House Bill 297 by Representative Dickey of the 140th, Monroe County. House Bill 304 by Representative Rhodes of the 120th, Putnam County. House Bill 305 by Representative Burns of the 159th, City, City of Sylvania. House Bill 306 by Re Representative Burns of the 159th, Screven County. House Bill 358 by Representative Bernal of the 77th, City of Morrow. House Bill 272 by Representative Holcomb of the 81st, City of Chambly. House Bill 274 by Representative Hill of the 3rd, Catoosa County. What purpose does Representative Carter rise? Parliamentary inquiry. State your inquiry. There is potentially a bill on the local calendar that did not follow the rules. Could it be removed for, um, for us to discuss this in delegation? I'm sorry, it's um, HB 272. I make a motion for HB 272 to be removed from the local calendar to be redirected to the delegation. I'm sorry, HB 272. Is your motion to House Bill 272? It says 272. It says HB 272. You're going to need to talk into your microphone. I can't hear you. On the calendar, it says HB 272. Mm -mm. So you are asking that House Bill 272 be removed and voted on separately? I'm asking that it be removed and pushed to the next uh, calendar day. Okay. I know. Hmm. I'm not in Clayton County.
What purpose does Representative Carter rise? Uh, to withdraw my motion. Representative Carter has asked for unanimous consent to withdraw her motion, uh, severing House Bill 272 from today's local calendar. Is there objection? Is there objection? Chair hears none. The motion is withdrawn. What purpose does Representative Holcomb rise? Make a motion. State your motion. I move to recommit House Bill 272 to the Intergovernmental Affairs Committee. Mr. Clerk, did you read the caption earlier? House Bill 272 by Representative Holcomb of the 81st, the City of Chambly. This bill increases the City of Chambly homestead exemption from $30,000 to $50,000 for those under the age of 65. On the gentleman's motion that House Bill 272 be withdrawn from the local calendar for today and recommitted to the Intergovernmental Coordination Committee, is there objection? Is there objection? The chair hears none, and it is on its way back to the Intergovernmental Coordination Committee.
What purpose does Representative Burnell rise? To make a motion. Just, 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 just a minute, Representative. Okay, we're taking up business here and uh, got a lot of movement and noise on the floor. Lady will state her motion. Um, to remove HB 72 until the next legislative day. The lady has moved that House Bill 72 be postponed until the next legislative day. The clerk will read the caption. House Bill 72 by substitute by Representative Bernardo the 77th. Clayton County. This bill provides for the salaries of the chairpersons and members of the Clayton County Board of Commissioners. On the lady's motion that House Bill 72 be postponed until the next legislative day, is there objection? Chair hears none and it is so ordered. So now. Okay, is there any objection to the previous question being ordered on the local calendar without House Bill 161, House Bill 272, and House Bill 72? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bills? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to shall these bills now pass all those in favor of the passage of the bills on the local calendar will vote aye those opposed will vote no and the clerk will unlock the machines Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine on the passage of the bills on the local calendar. The ayes are 157, the nays are zero. These bills having received the requisite constitutional majority are therefore passed. We are going on now to morning orders. We don't have very many today, but the, we do have some business to take up. So chair's gonna limit morning orders to two minutes each. Chair recognizes Representative Gardner for a morning order. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I rise today as part of Black History Month to ask me to join, ask you to join me in honoring an interesting and colossal uh, individual from the House 57th District. If you would stand up, Mr. Rishi De, ne De Forest. <laughs> so let me tell you why we are honoring him today. He is the founder and curator of a museum d dedicated to the Madam C.J. Walker beauty products, very renowned, known to many. I think Representative Williams could tell you a little about them in a minute. It, on Hilliard Street, but immediately below this museum on Hilliard Street stood the first African-American owner owned and produced radio station. It was owned and operated on Hilliard, the very first African-American radio station in North America. 
known as W-E-R-D. Mr. DeForest has dedicated his energy and enormous resources to educate the public about Atlanta's rich and dynamic history. He has a remarkable collection of vinyls from that area, and I was hoping we could get him to play some, but uh, I'm very honored to have this in the 57th district and that he is dedicating himself to, to forwarding this culture. Thank you very much. You want to tell him about the product? No, the speaker hadn't said. I just stood with him. <laughs> <laughs> The representative has asked to announce that photographs will be taken in the ante room. And I want to commend Representative Al Williams for noticing that the light came on. <laughs> Chair recognizes Chairman Ron Stevens for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In the gallery today, we have um, the, our top students in Richmond Hill, Georgia. National Honor Society Jennifer Key is also here. You know, we just don't recognize those people that really go the extra effort to be the very best they can be. So would you help me honor these guys? Stand, if you will, so we can recognize the Richmond Hill honorees, if you will. Chair recognizes Representative Howard for a morning order. Good morning. And I want to come to you with the Black History Moment for today. And this is an easy one for me because it recognizes the founder and principal of the school that I graduated, high school that I graduated from. The founding principal of Haynes Institute in Augusta for 50 years, Miss Lucy Craft Laney in Georgia was the most famous female American, uh, African American educator. She was born in April 13, 1854, one of 10 children to Louisa and David Laney doing slavery. Her parents, however, were not slaves. Uh, David Laney purchased his freedom about 20 years before Laney's birth. He purchased his wife's freedom after they, somewhere after the marriage. Miss Laney learned to read and write by the age of four and could translate difficult passages in Latin by the age of 12, including Julius Caesar commentaries on the Gallic War. She attended Lewis High School in Macon, Georgia, which was sponsored by the American Missionary Association. In 1869, Miss Laney joined the first class of Atlanta's University, uh, Clark Atlanta University in the first graduating class from the normal department, teaching, teaching and training in 1873. Women were not allowed to take the classic courses at Atlanta University at the time, a reality to which Laney reacted and blistered the, uh, excuse me, the indignation. After teaching in Macon and Savannah and Augusta, uh, Miss Laney's 10 years, Miss Lucy Laney was generally known, be began her own school in 1883. Miss Laney's picture hangs out in the foyer and as one of the first educators in the state of Georgia and under uh, Governor Carter, they decided to put her, her pit portrait here in the Capitol. So 
if you get a chance, read the uh, history on Miss Lane, and you will find out she was a prominent black female that did a lot for this state and a lot for the country. And I bring to you Miss Lucy Craft Laney in this Black History Moment for today. Thank you. Chair recognizes Representative Matt Wilson to introduce the Doctor of the Day. Thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's my pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Stephen Kane. Dr. Kane is a magna cum laude graduate of the University of Utah and a graduate of Baylor College of Medicine. He completed his orthopedic surgery residency at the Carolinas Medical Center and a sports medicine fellowship at Utah State University. He's held medical school faculty appointments at the University of Texas, Marshall University, and served as chief of sports medicine for the University of Missouri School of Medicine. He currently chairs the orthopedic surgery residency at Atlanta Medical Center and directs the sports medicine program for Atlanta Public School District. Please help me welcome Dr. Stephen Kane. So I've done this a number of years. I, I want to I recognize the honor students sitting up there in the, uh, in the balcony. I always, I've always asked to say a few words. And this year, my biggest worry is I've been doing academic medicine for 25 years. I chair an orthopedic surgery residency. And every year, we have 600 applicants for four slots. And I was asked a couple of weeks ago, do I have any concerns about where we're headed in medicine? And my biggest concern is, I'm not sure we're still getting the best and the brightest that go into medicine. And when I ask them why, or I ask young minds that finish at the top of their class why they no longer seek medicine as a career, many times they say, I think the rules that have come between the physician and the patient have made medicine less attractive. And so my message this year is to be very careful about passing laws that interfere with physician-patient relationships, as I think that that is negatively affecting our ability to train the best and the brightest minds, and I'd like to see all 20 of those young people in medical school and in my program in the near future. Thank you. House will be in order. We are about to recognize some very distinguished Georgians. Clerk will read the caption to House Resolution 157. House Resolution 157 by Representative Montmahana the 17th, Gravely the 67th, Gullet of the 19th. A resolution commending Caleb Lee Hutchinson and for other purposes. Chair recognizes Representative Montahan for an invite resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members of the House, it is my pleasure and honor to introduce one of the stars of American Idol's 16th season, Caleb Lee Hutchinson. He is joined today by his parents, Piper and William, and they are from my hometown of Dallas, Georgia. Welcome. Caleb started his music career early when he first, uh, when he won his first competitive talent show in the seventh grade, and he hasn't slowed down since. In addition to American Idol, he has appeared on the TV show The Voice and has opened for singers like Bo Bice, Gene Watson, and Jimmy Fortune. After the entire country heard him sing songs like Don't Close Your Eyes, Meant to Be, and Getting You Home, with his signature baritone voice, I have no doubt that he will have continued success in his music career. Ladies and gentlemen of the house, please join me in welcoming our Georgia American Idol, Caleb Lee Hutchinson.
Well, thank you all so much uh, for allowing me to be here. I consider this a great honor. Um, first, I just want to thank the good Lord uh, for everything that's happened in this past year. He's been so good to me and, and allowed so many things to happen. Um, you know, I just, I just want to say I was born and raised in West Georgia, and uh, so this is the, the state I've lived in my whole life. And this past year, I've got the chance to see a lot of this great country, and uh, I can still say for a fact that this is still my favorite place to be. And I still love being in the state of Georgia. And if it's all right, I'm going to uh, attempt to sing y'all a little bit of a song here. Um, some of y'all might want to cover your ears. It's, uh, you know, I, didn't, I didn't quite get my, my do re mis in this morning. Um, but again, thank y'all for having me. This is a little bit of a song I wrote a while back called Workhorse. Well, baby, my back hurts from bending over backwards, trying to find a way to make you stay. Darling, my legs are hurting The only thing I know for certain Is I can't keep trying to carry this weight I need some time to clear my head Some time to make some sense When we started down this road And where we've been headed since Well, it sure hurts to say it And it rocks me to the core Baby, I don't think I can be your workhorse anymore. Thank y'all so much. Thank you for having me this morning. God bless y'all. Well, I thought sure I'd get a motion that we dispense with the business of the house today and let Caleb do a concert. <clears throat> Clerk will read the caption to House Resolution. 275. House Resolution 275 by Representative Taylor, the 173rd, Powell, the 171st, Green, the 151st, and LaHood, the 175th. A resolution commending the Bainbridge Bearcats football team for winning the 2018 GHSA 5A State Football Championship and for other purposes. Chair recognizes Chairman Darlene Taylor for an invite resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, members of the House. Today I'm excited to celebrate the Class 5A 
2018 Bainbridge Bearcats for winning the state championship. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> this wasn't just some win. This is the second football title in Bainbridge's high school's history. They traveled a lot of miles. They took a lot of um, really tough games. But of all the things that they accomplished, all of the things these kids did, remember what happened last October? There was a big hurricane in Decatur County, and these kids hung in. Some didn't have homes, didn't have what they needed, but they came together and showed their spirit and their grit, and they won the state championships. Coach, would you like to say a few words? Thank you, Representative Taylor. On, on behalf of Bainbridge High School in Bainbridge, Georgia, and Decatur County, um, I would like to say that we are honored and humbled to be here, and we appreciate the invite. I would like to introduce uh, our captains of our football team, Bowen Dodson, Roman Harrison, Randy Fillingame, and Jacob McLaughlin. Thank you very much. The House will be in order. The House will come to order. Chair recognizes the Chair of the House Appropriations Committee, Chairman England, for a motion. House do pass the House amendment to the Senate sub for House Bill 30. Clerk will read the caption. House Bill 30 by to be titled an act to amend an act providing appropriations for the state fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2018 and ending June 30th, 2019 known as the General Appropriations Act. The chair recognizes Chairman England to explain the Senate substitute and the House amendment to House Bill 30. Chairman England. Good morning, everyone. Ms. Speaker, I'll just start off just, saying. Just a moment, Mr. Chairman. We are taking up now one of the most important measures we will deal with this session. And I know that many of you have very, very important items of business to conduct. And if you do, we have any rooms and hallways for that. I'm gonna ask though that you give the gentleman your attention out of respect to the chair as well as your fellow members. Gentlemen may proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I was just going to say there to begin with, I saw him come up with a guitar a little bit ago, and I was sure glad he didn't hand it to you, so. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, on your desk, you'll have in front of you a couple of documents. 
we're going to uh, walk through what is actually the uh, tracking sheet of the changes of differences between the House version and the Senate version and the agreements that we have come to with our colleagues in the Senate uh, for the amended FY19 budget. First, I do need to always, of course, express thank yous not only to our, our committee and subcommittee chairs, but especially to our staff, uh, to our friends across the hall in the Senate who agreed to many of the, uh, the changes that we had made, plus many of the things that uh, the governor had recommended in his original document as well. Uh, and, and thank my counterpart, Senator Hill, for his always willing cooperation to sit down and, and uh, have a gentlemanly discussion on, on budget items and, and get our work done. So as you start off on your tracking sheet document, which is the one that looks very similar to this, the, 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 the seven-pager, six-pager, whatever it is, you'll, you'll see some, uh, one change in the Senate, just an adjustment there for some of the funds there for the Secretary of the Senate's office. Moving on down to Section 3, the Joint Offices of the General Assembly, as we have moved to make some changes there, we had put in half of that in the House. The Senate came back and matched our ha half on both of those items under Section 3. Looking at the Court of Appeals, uh, again, just going back as, as I've often described, when we walk through the amended budget, we're truing up the course to bring the ship into port for the end of this year. And so as we move in uh, and, and do our work throughout the budget, then as the Senate gets it, it's about a month after we've had the opportunity to look at those numbers and things continue to true up and that's what you're gonna see for the majority of these changes going through. And that holds true on section five on the Court of Appeals. Same holds true on section six under juvenile courts, uh, truing up for the actual reimbursements for the family treatment courts. Under state accounting office, again, another true up for expenditures. One of the things that I do want to stop for just a second and point out, Section 13, is this bill left the House. We had added an additional $10 million to the Georgia Development Authority for them to use for the, the bridge loans for our producers so heavily hit by Hurricane Michael last October. Uh, the Senate had, had been watching and working with us on that. Uh, they brought an, an additional $8 million in, the, in their bill and as we finished up balancing last night, we were added an additional two for a total of $20 million going to the Development Authority to help with those bridge loans. <laughs> That'll help about another 75 producers at the current average loan rate. Uh, hopefully stay in business and keep from losing their farms moving forward. As we continue to wait on Congress and uh, our friends in the federal government to come forward with a disaster program, I know that our congressional delegation has, as it kind of reminded me in, in the song a few minutes ago about bending over backwards to do what they can, and they have. I know that our congressional delegation has worked awfully hard and continue to work awfully hard to, to not only help those folks affected by Hurricane Michael in Georgia, but those in Florida, those affected by the earlier storms in North Carolina, South Carolina, and Virginia as well. Moving on to Section 15, under uh, Department of Behavioral Health, you'll see an adjustment there. Um, we were just going in and again capturing some, basically some one-time savings. Section 16, Department of Community Affairs, dealing with uh, the ATL, uh, the Senate had, had looked at some things and we had a little bit of a, a, a course of disagreement. That's the reason it shows up here in the document, but do realize that, that the original funding level was necessary for some, several federal matches to go toward the work of their programs. Section 17 under DCH, you'll see an addition there at 1715 of another $600,000 dealing with uh, the research necessary for the waivers. The 600,000 is necessary for the 1332 waiver, which is what helps establish alternate insurance plans, uh, especially for those that may have pre-existing conditions and those sorts of things in our state. 1718 is a $600,000 savings as well, uh, coming out of the administration program. 
another true up on that. Under 17.4.2, dealing with champions for children, uh, the, the amount that had been plugged in uh, actually was a full year's funding, which is not necessary. So what we've done is drawn back to the actual three months left in the remaining part of this fiscal year, and we'll fund that, and then we will we intend to roll that funding into the big budget that we'll be working on next week as well. 1743, another um, response to Hurricane Michael. Um, Senator Burke in the Senate has been working on, on this project since we were here in special session in identifying several of the rural, small rural hospitals around the state that were impacted. Um, we, we're having, of course, a much bigger discussion on health care in the state, but at the same time, it is important that we remember that our safety net hospitals do rely on a lot of income uh, from elective surgeries and those sorts of things. And of course, the hurricane hitting them when it did uh, disrupted that schedule for quite a while. And so they have taken quite an impact on their bottom lines. And so what the, the $2 million there will do is to go in and, and all kind of on a pro rata share to help those hospitals overcome those losses. 1744, the Senate had removed some money, a uh, million and a half dollars that was put in last year for the Health Coordination and Innovation Council. Uh, that legislation was actually vetoed. However, if you'll remember, we also included money in the budget last year for the flu response because when we were here last year, half hours walking around with the flu that we knew, and the other half hours walking around with the flu and we didn't know it, but that was pretty much the uh, how we found the whole state, and so a lot of our, our hospitals just had an inundation of people coming in with flu issues. So the money actually was used within the department, again, for that flu response. Just an adjustment under 1776, dealing with the clawback payment there. Uh, low income Medicaid, just another truing up of numbers at 1781. A language change basically at 1784, dealing with general funds versus tobacco settlement funds. Um, using the tobacco settlement funds for one of the intended uses there. 1712-3 under GME, graduate medical education. Uh, again, a truing up for the fellowships that were unused at this point uh, and will not be used before the end of the year. Under the Department of Corrections, uh, Section 19, Offender Management, 1962, again, a truing up of numbers uh, to get to the end of the year. Uh, Department of Education, you'll look there under Ag Education, there are two items. One is just capturing of a savings for a little bit later, higher date, even a little bit later than what we had anticipated when the budget left here. And at 2414, a replacement for a boiler at a canning plant in Brooks County um, in order for that plant to be up and running in time for the, the upcoming canning season. And it's the reason we didn't bond that item. 24-12-2, um, some data storage devices at DOE needing replacement, uh, some one-time funds for that. Non-QBE grants, a truing up of the sparsity number. Uh, the Senate had one set of numbers, we had a different set of numbers, so we basically wound up coming back to where it left the house with no deduction there. State schools, um, the million dollars we recommended going to the state schools, the one in Cave Spring and the one in Macon that are residential state schools to provide generators uh, during storms, ice storms, power outages. Uh, the Senate had taken it out but in our talks and, and uh, an agreement, we've put that back in. 24, 24, three, just a small adjustment on start dates. 24, 25.2, uh, Senator P.K. Martin has been working on uh, coding labs and the improvement that, that we can make in young people's lives across the state by opening up another avenue of opportunity for them. And so we're, he's, had recommended in the Senate, and we've agreed to it, to focus uh, the coding labs in middle schools in rural and high poverty school districts across the state. 2773, under Governor's Office of Student Achievement, the reduction of funds for a program that had been eliminated. Under Human Services, Child Welfare Services, just uh, another language item there, a slight change in the language from the document that left here 
and the conference committee has agreed to those that ch that verbiage change no dollar change there elder and community living services um, what we know is meals on wheels as we see our uh, triple A's around the state going out and helping people that are homebound and don't have the ability to, to cook for themselves. It, this will do about 30,000 additional meals and help about 272 additional seniors around this state that, that don't have a way to cook or feed themselves. Section 29, insurance. Um, they've asked for some special fraud investigators and what we've told them to do is utilize some existing funds that they have there for that. GBI under Section 30, Board, uh, Bureau Administration. Uh, as the budget had left here, we had said go ahead with the design of the Northwest Georgia GBI Lab. Uh, the Senate had taken that back out, but we in agreement to put that back in as well. Forensic services, the equipment to do a lot of the drug testing that your local sheriffs and police departments are sending to the GBI. Uh, we've managed to, to make an incredible hit on what we've done on helping them on the rape kit backlog. And so now we have some additional backlog issues and this is seeking to start addressing that issue as well. And then at 30.4.4, the uh, see something, send something out to be used in the school systems to allow students to anonymously report anything that they may see that concerns them as far as school safety goes. And I will tell you back in the fall, I had the opportunity to meet the two young people that actually invented this application and heard their testimony at a community meeting we had in Barra County about what they were seeing in their school system and, and the reason for their work in inventing this app. And it's actually quite impressive. And I'm glad we're gonna be doing that. Under juvenile justice, 3112, again, a truing up of the actual numbers there. Under secure detention at 314.2, again, a truing up of the actual start date of the Cadwell Center. And then in public defenders, again, going back to our position there as it left the house at 371.2 and 372.2 on some of the leave payouts and also some aging equipment. IT infrastructure that needed to be replaced as well. Moving on to public health, uh, doing some, again, uh, truing up of funds as it relates at 38.4.2 and again at 38.7.2, uh, just uh, adjusting and truing up those numbers as well. Moving on to public safety, section 39 under aviation, uh, we had taken um, the funds out in the House version and saying utilize existing funds. The Senate had put that back in, but we've come back to the House position there. Moving down to 39.4.2 as it relates to equipment, we agreed with the Senate position there, and also at 39.4.3 to allow them, give them the funds to purchase that equipment. However, at 39.4.6, you will see an adjustment of 615,000 uh, for some savings that, that are available within that, that program area. Under motor carrier compliance, went back to the house position there on the leave payouts to allow them to use their internal funds that would other li otherwise lapse to do those leave payouts. Utilities regulation under public service commission at 40.3.4 You'll see uh, the Senate had made an adjustment, but again, as we sat down and start comparing notes, realized that, that what, what we'd start off with was actually probably uh, the, actually the right number, so we've gone back to the House position there. Moving to Section 41 under Regents, again, some truing up of numbers based on start dates under Ag Experiment, Cooperative Extension, and then also under Vet Med. Department of Revenue, Forest Land Protection Grants. The Forest Land Protection Grants, there's enough funding in hand today um, with this number to fund those invoices that are in hand today. Should there be some backlog there, we will address that again as we come to the amended budget next year. Uh, local tax officials, a truing up of numbers there under the uh, retirement and FICA, and then 
coming to an agreement at uh, the integrated tax solution, the S system improvements per House Bill 61 from last year and House Bill 918 um, in, in rolling that program out. Tr again, truing up the numbers as to what the actual needs should, should be very close to. Student Finance Commission went back to the House position there, but or excuse me, had stayed at the House position, there is just a little bit of a language change um, in transitioning 85 positions um, from using state funds to lottery funds there. In, f in, in the same category with student finance at 44.1.3, uh, again, recognizing some of the, the moves made internally, but also allowing them to uh, make the improvements on their data access portal for the school systems. Dual enrollment at 44.2.1. Uh, after a lot of back and forth, we have uh, finally kind of got to where we think we need to be on dual enrollment. This is the adjustment to meet the actual need there. Also under HOPE grant, just reducing that amount for the actual need. And then tuition equalization grants as well, uh, adjusting for the actual need. Then under section 47 and finally under DOT, no dollars changed there, but just asking DOT if they would to conduct an assessment around the state uh, of the roads and bridges within our state park system and also the driveways leading to and from our uh, school, K-12 schools around the state and kind of prioritize those on short and long-term needs so we can make sure we're meeting the need there going forward after we get that report. And with that, Mr. Speaker, again, I want to emphasize as we finish up our work on the amended 19, we've done several things uh, pretty incredible in this budget. And I'll go back to the 20 million with the Georgia Development Authority, what we've done there. Fully funding QBE in the original budget and the adjustments we've made here, make sure that it is fully funded. And for the first time in many years, there are increases within the base budget to the foster care families and for what it costs them to take care of our, our most vulnerable population around this state. So there's a lot of things in this document to be very proud of. And I hope that, that you all uh, understand how important many of these adjustments are and uh, can go home and, and tell your folks at home that you're looking out for them up here. With that, Mr. Speaker, I'll be glad to answer any questions there may be. If there are none, I will yield the well. You do not have any questions. Well, you know, I've been here long enough to know when you don't, don't stay any longer because you will. But uh, with that, ladies and gentlemen, I would ask for your favorable consideration of the House Amendment to the Senate sub of House Bill 30. Thank you. Is there any objection to the adoption of the House Amendment to the Senate substitute to House Bill 30. Any objection to the House Amendment? The Chair hears none and the House Amendment is adopted. On the gentleman's motion that the House agree to the Senate substitute to House Bill 30 as amended by this House, all those in favor will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines. On the gentleman's motion that this house agree 
to the Senate substitute to House Bill 30 as amended by the House. The ayes are 155, the nays are 10, and this House has agreed. What purpose does Chairman England rise? Make a motion, Mr. Speaker. State your motion. I move for the immediate transmittal of the House amendment to the Senate sub of House Bill 30 to the Senate. Gentlemen, is moved that House Bill 30, the Senate substitute to House Bill 30, as amended by the House, be immediately transmitted to the State Senate. Is there objection? Is there objection? The chair hears none, and it is so ordered. What purpose does Chairman Houston rise? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would ask that House Bill 85 be removed off today's calendar and heard at the next legislative day. Clerk will read the caption. House Bill 85 by Representative Houston of the 170th Newton, 123rd Corporate of the 174th Roads, the 120th Columns, the 68th B. Title and Act to amend Code Section 4883. The official go to Georgia annotated relating to exemptions from sales and use tax. House Bill 85 was postponed yesterday to until the next legislative day. The lady has now moved that it be postponed until Monday, which will be the next legislative day. Is there objection? The chair hears none and it is so ordered. We are now going on to the rules calendar. We're going on to the rules calendar. Clerk will read the caption to House Bill 99. House Bill 99 by Representative Smith of the 134th be titled an act to amend Title 33, the Fish Code of George Annotated, relating to insurance so as to provide for modernization and updates as the Levin referred the Committee on Insurance. That committee recommends that this bill do pass. Chair recognizes the Chair of the House Insurance Committee, Chairman Smith, to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, this bill is an effort that's been going on for the past two, two and a half years to modernize the uh, insurance code. Uh, it was a joint effort between my office and the insurance commissioner's office. The goal was to update, modernize, and make corrections to Title 33 of the, of the Georgia Code. Um, this particular bill starts at the 40th chapter and goes through uh, the continuation of the, of the code section. Uh, has corrections for wrong citations, style, punctuations, those kind of things. And I want to emphasize there's absolutely nothing in this bill that changes current law. Uh, I know there's been some discussion as it relates to some lines that were, had little lines drawn through them as it relates to the commissioner's ability to um, set rules and regulations. But if you look at chapter 33, I mean 33-2-9, uh, um, if I can read this since it's small print, commissioner shall have full power and authority to make rules and regulations. So there's nothing in this bill anywhere that changes current law. Mr. Speaker, I ask for your favorable consideration and I'll answer any questions or, or I'll answer one. You and I'll do not answer. have any questions. Very good, I ask for your favorable consideration. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered on House Bill 99? The chair hears none, the previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to adopting the committee substitute? The chair hears none, the committee substitute is adopted. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of House Bill 99 will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? 
If so, the clerk will lock the machines. On the passage of House Bill 99, the ayes are 149, the nays are 14. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Clerk will read the caption to House Bill 167. House Bill 167 by Representative Taylor, 173rd Smith, 134th, Williams, 148th Green, and 151st meets the act of the 73rd. We title an act to amend code section 33, 23, 29, the official code of George Ann Taylor relating the authority of an agent to act as an adjuster. This bill I refer to the Committee on Insurance. That committee recommends that this bill do pass. Chair recognizes Chairman Darlene Taylor to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, this is a very simple bill. It allows a property and casualty insurance company employee to handle simple claims that are under $1,000. They don't have to have a, a license to be an adjuster. This is a win-win bill. It allows policyholders, claimants, to have a quick settlement of small claims, such as food spoilage. It allows carriers to redirect the seasoned adjusters to be deployed at more serious and complex uh, claims. This need came about during the hurricane. And in light of how devastating that was, many, many families needed food and temporary shelter. This would have uh, been a blessing to them when their claims could have been settled much more quickly. Um, it's very simply a bill which streamlined the process for quickly resolving at least a portion of these small claims. If there are no questions, I will ask for your favorable consideration of the bill. There are no questions. Thank you. There is a member that wishes to be heard on the bill. Chair recognizes Representative Walensky to speak to the bill. Thank you, Speaker. You all know this is my first year. I'm new, and this is the first bill that concerns me. I understand the intent. I've spoken to Chairman, and the intent here is to do good and to help uh, emergency situations move forward quickly. However, my concern is the broadness of this bill. It's not limited in scope. I can understand, well, all of us here have jewelry, some of us have firearms or other things that are worth under $1,000. It concerns me to allow a non-qualified adjuster to deny a claim. So I would understand if this was restricted to approving claims or if it was to also pay out a claim, but this gives a non-qualified person in an insurance company who's not a qualified adjuster to deny a claim. That's my concern. I yield the well, thank you. Gentlemen, has yielded the well. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none, the previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none, the report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of House Bill 167 will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines. 
On the passage of House Bill 167, the ayes are 104, the nays are 60. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Clerk will read the caption to House Bill 225. House Bill 225, I've received Rich the 97th, Rogers the 10th, Jaspers the 11th, Gullet of the 19th, Mathis of the 144th, and others to be titled an act to amend code section 41A to the official code of Georgia annotated relating to safe operations of motor carriers, commercial motor vehicles, and drivers. This bill have referred to the Committee on Motor Vehicles. That committee recommends that this bill do pass. Representative Rich, I believe, is that your name? It's a pleasure to meet you. you you've been with us how long? 20 days. Well, I don't know what it is about your bill, but uh, you haven't even gotten in the well, and you already have questions. Wow. Chair recognizes Representative Bonnie Rich to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, members of the House. I bring to you today House Bill 225, which is the annual motor carrier bill. Uh, it is um, sponsored by or requested by the Georgia Department of Public Safety. This bill involves a date change. Uh, it allows the Georgia Department of Public Safety to enforce the federal regulations that went into effect January 1st of 2019 governing motor carriers and commercial vehicles on the Georgia roadways. Again, this is only a date change. There are no other changes in the statute. And with that, if there are no questions, I, I yield the will. You uh, have a number of questions. Do you yield? I do. Chair recognizes the chair of the Economic Development and Tourism Committee, Chairman Stevens, to your left for a question. Just curious, to, to the lady you? Yes. Uh, does my mama go like this bill? Uh, I, I, think, I think she will. I think that I think she'll find that our, our roadways are safer because of this bill. Thank you, gentle lady. <laughs> do you further yield? I do. Chair recognizes the majority whip, uh, majority caucus whip, Representative Kelly, to your right for a question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Will the gentle lady yield? Yes. Uh, Representative Rich, I appreciate you bringing this bill. Uh, the safety of our roadways is something that we all should be attuned to. Uh, but as I'm reading through it, um, I, I see one big problem. Do you have the bill in front of you? I, I do not. Okay. <laughs> oh, can, can we hand her? Mm. Will, you, will you further yield? I do. As I was reading through the bill, thinking about the importance of this measure and how we need to implement it in Georgia, I was concerned that there's no effective date listed on your bill. And so while... We have something that we need done in Georgia. Even if we pass it today, I'm concerned that it never will become effective. Um, can you speak to that at all? It's my understanding that there are provisions in the remainder of this particular chapter that provide for an effective date, and then the actual date that's in this legislation, this proposed legislation, um, provides the effective date. 
Now that date, I think when I was looking at it, said it came in January 1st, 2019, if you continue to yield. Yes. So are we following something that we haven't even voted on yet? These are the federal regulations that have already been approved and promulgated by the federal government. Thank you. Chair recognizes the governor's floor leader, gentleman from Habersham County, Representative Rogers, to your right for a question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, to my seatmate, will you yield? Yes, I do. Okay, in full disclosure, I've carried this bill the last five years, and I never really have had a problem with the bill until this year. In light, in light of the fact that we just voted on an amended budget that had to put $20 million back in to bail out the federal government because they wouldn't help our farmers in South Georgia, do you think it's wise that we follow these federal <laughs> regulations? This might be uh, an area where I would recommend that we do so, yes. So you don't care about our farmers in South Georgia? <laughs> oh, I do. I do. I care about them <laughs> very much. I know you do. Congratulations <laughs> on your first bill. Thank you. Chair recognizes in the, spirit, in the spirit of bipartisanship, <laughs> Representative Bentley to your left for a question. <laughs> Does the gentlelady yield? Yes. <laughs> Can you please help me to understand how your legislation is going to impact the funeral industry? <laughs> I'm listening. <laughs> well, the funeral industry does make use of our roadways, and <laughs> we want those cars to be very safe and protected, and the enactment of this legislation will definitely work toward that end goal. Do you further you? <laughs> yes. One more. <laughs> will the passage of this legislation, will it help for uh, the funeral directors to be able to drive the hearses in the HOV lanes? I'll have to uh, defer to better minds on that one. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And congratulations you. on your first thank bill. You. Thank you. I yield the well. Lady has yielded the well in the nick of time. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of House Bill 225 will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. And the clerk will. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, The clerk will lock the machines. <laughs> on, the, on the passage of House Bill 225, the ayes are 162, the nays are zero. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Clerk will read the caption to House Bill 246. House Bill 246 by Representative Silcox of the 52nd, Cooper the 43rd, Kelly the 16th, Efstration of the 104th, Rich the 97th, and others, be entitled an act to amend Article 6 of Chapter 13 and Title 24, the official code of George Ann Taylor relating the depositions to preserve testimony in criminal proceedings, so as to revise the manner by which depositions taken at the instance of the state are paid. This bill have referred to the Committee on Judiciary and Non Civil. That committee recommends that this bill do pass.
Chair recognizes Chairman Silcox to present the bill. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I bring to you today House Bill 246. This is brought to us by the Prosecuting Attorneys Council and the Elder Abuse Council. This bill simply strikes language from our code that the Prosecuting Attorneys Council would pay for depositions in criminal proceedings, when in practice they actually never have. When, on rare occasions, such deposition is taken, the judge is the person who usually decides to pay for that, who decides who's going to pay for that deposition. This bill just memorializes existing practice uh, today. If there are no questions, I'll yield the well, Mr. Speaker. You have no questions. Thank you. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of House Bill 246 will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines. On the passage of House Bill 246, the ayes are 166, the nays are zero. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. We have a number of motions to take up. House will continue to be in order. For what purpose does Representative Hogan rise? Make a motion. State your motion. I move that the rules be temporarily suspended so that the bill may be read for the first time and assigned to a committee. Representative Hogan has moved that the rules of this House be temporarily suspended to allow a bill to be read for the first time and assigned to committee. The clerk will read the caption. Unnumbered House bill by Representative Hogan, Jones the 167th, Saints, Williams the 145th, Clark the 147th, and others be titled an act to amend part two of Article Four, Chapter Five of Title 12, the official code of Georgia annotated relating to shore protection. This is not to do with forming cities on the coast, is it? I just need to no, know. No, sir. Okay. I can promise you that. Natural resources and environment. What purpose does Chairman Knight rise? Make a motion. State your motion. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to make a motion that the rules of the House be temporarily suspended so that a bill may be read for the first time and assigned to committee. Chairman Knight has moved that the rules of this House be temporarily suspended to allow a bill to be read for the first time and assigned to committee. The clerk will read the caption. A numbered House bill by Representative Knight of the 130th and others to be entitled an act to amend code section 48.7. 40.36 of the official code of Georgia annotated relating to income tax credits for timber producers incurring losses from Hurricane Michael. On the gentleman's motion that the rules of this house be temporarily suspended to allow a bill to be read for the first time and assigned to committee, is there objection? Chair hears none and it is so ordered. Ways and means. What purpose does Representative Laricki arise. Make a motion. State your motion. Make a motion. The rules be temporarily suspended so that a bill can be read for the first time and assigned to committee. Representative Laricki has moved that the rules of this House be temporarily suspended to allow a bill to be read for the first time and assigned to committee. The clerk will read the caption. A numbered House Bill by Representative Lavricchia, the 169th, to be titled an act to amend Chapter 8 of Title 48 
The official code of Georgia annotator relating sales and use taxes stows exempt jet fuel from state sales and use tax for a period of time. On the gentleman's motion that the rules of this house be temporarily suspended to allow a bill to be read for the first time and assigned to committee, is there objection? The chair hears none and it is so ordered ways and means. What purpose does Chairman Dollar arise? Make a motion. State your motion. Uh, move, or move that the rules be temporarily suspended so that a bill may be read for the first time. Chairman Dollar has moved that the rules of the House be temporarily suspended to allow a bill to be read for the first time and assigned to committee. Clerk will read the caption. A numbered House bill by Chairman Dollar, the 45th be titled an act to amend Article 3 of Chapter 13 of Title 48 of the Fish Code of Georgia annotated relating the excise tax on rooms, lodgings, and accommodations so as to revise the definition of innkeeper to include lodging facilitators. On the gentleman's motion that the rules of this house be temporarily suspended to allow a bill to be read for the first time and assigned to committee, is there objection? Chair hears none, and it is so ordered. Ways and means. What purpose does Chairman Stevens rise? Make a motion. State your motion. Move that this house temporarily suspend its rules so that a bill can be read for the first time and assigned to committee. Chairman Stevens has moved that the rules of this House be temporarily suspended to allow a bill to be read for the first time and assigned to committee. The clerk will read the caption. A numbered House bill by Chairman Stevens is 164th to be titled an act to amend Chapter 8 of Title 48 of the Fish Code of Georgia annotated relating sales and use taxes so as to create an exemption from sales and use tax for certain property used in the construction, renovation, or expansion of certain, certain multi-use areas. On the gentleman's motion that the rules of this house be temporarily suspended to allow a bill to be read for the first time and assigned to committee, is there objection? Chair hears none and it is so ordered. Ways and means. What purpose does Representative Jones rise? Make a motion, Mr. Speaker. State your motion. I move that the rules be temporarily suspended so that a bill may be read for the first time and assigned to committee. Clerk's office tells me they do not have your bill, Representative, so we're unable to do that. Clerk will read the caption to a group of privileged resolutions. Commending and congratulating Golden Isles College and Career Academy. Commending and recognizing Whitley Stewart for winning the World Wake Surfing Championship. Recognizing the Civil Air Patrol for the service of the citizens of Georgia. Recognizing October 7th through 11, 2019 is Georgia Pre-K Week. Commending the Georgia Rural Health Association on recognizing February 27th, 2019 as Rural Health Day at the State Capitol. Recognizing the annual Cordell Crisp County Fish Fry and commending the Cordell County Commission. Honoring the life and memory of Herbert Millet Burt Crane Jr. Recognizing and commending Josh McWhorter. Commending the Leadership Paulding 29. Recognizing and commending the Georgia Chapter of the National Council of Negro Women. Recognizing and commending Mercer University School of Law for its commitment to higher education. Honoring the lives and memory of Tom Foster Jr. and Joyce Pruitt Foster. Commending Mothers Raising Sons Incorporated and recognizing March 20th, 2019 as Mothers Raising Sons Day at the State Capitol. Honoring and commending Kyle and Brent Pease and for other purposes that completes the reading of the privilege resolutions. Is there any objection to adopting the privilege resolutions? The chair hears none, and the resolutions are adopted. We have two more motions. What purpose does Representative Jones rise? 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We'll try to get it right this time. I make a motion to that the rules be temporarily suspended so that a bill may be read for the first time and assigned to committee. Thank you. Gentlemen, has moved that the rules of this House be temporarily suspended to allow a bill to be read for the first time and assigned to committee. Clerk will read the caption. A numbered House bill by Representative Jones, the 167th, be titled an act to amend Article 4, Chapter 4 of Title 27, the official code of Georgia annotator relating to seafood so as to provide for AmeriCulture development. On the gentleman's motion that the rules of this House be temporarily suspended to allow a bill to be read for the first time and assigned to committee. Is there objection? The chair hears none and it is so ordered. Game, fish, and parks. What purpose does Representative Gaines rise? Mr. Speaker, I move that the rules be temporarily suspended so a bill may be read for the first time and assigned to committee. Representative Gaines has moved that the rules of this house be temporarily suspended to allow a bill to be read for the first time and assigned to committee. Clerk will read the caption. A number to House Bill by Representative Gaines of the 117th, be titled an act to amend Article 2 of Chapter 7, Title 48 of the Official Code of Georgia Annotated, relating the imposition rate and computation and exemptions from state income taxes. On the gentleman's motion that the rules of this House be temporarily suspended to allow a bill to be read for the first time and assigned to committee. Is there objection? The chair hears none, and it is so ordered. Ways and means. All right, we're going on now to announcements. If you have signed up for an announcement, make your way to the front of the chamber. We're beginning to do page photographs. Chair recognizes Chairman Timothy Barr for an announcement. Good morning, y'all. Code Revision will meet upon adjournment, room 403. Code Revision 403 upon adjournment. Thank you so much. Chair recognizes the chair of the Minority Caucus, Chairman Beverly, for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The um, Georgia House Democratic Caucus will meet immediately upon adjournment in room 506 CLOB immediately upon adjournment, room 506, CLOP. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Chair recognizes Chairman Richard Smith for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The um, Special Committee on Access to Quality Health Care will meet Monday morning at 8 o'clock. Monday morning at 8 o'clock in room 341. Thank you. Chair recognizes the chair of the Judiciary Committee, Chairman Fleming, for an announcement. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The House Judiciary Committee will meet 30 minutes after adjournment, and lunch will be provided. Thank you. Chair recognizes Representative Gardner for an announcement. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. The City of Atlanta delegation will meet uh, shortly after noon in room 605 today. Thank you. That completes our announcements. Completes our announcements. Chair wants to wish all of you a very pleasant and restful weekend. Getaway day. Chair recognizes the majority leader of the house for a motion. Mr. Speaker, I move that this house stand adjourned until 10 a.m. Monday, February the 25th. 2019. The majority leader has moved that this House adjourn until Monday, February 25th at 10 a.m. All those in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed will say no. The ayes clearly have it. This House will be adjourned until Monday, February 25th at 10 a.m.